by his expansion. So there's no problem with Krishna to actually reciprocate with the devotee. Once we make clear to him actually what kind of service we want to perform. See, everyone has some kind of activity that is naturally pleasing to them. Like, I love to play music and stuff like that. Uh, so for me, music is a natural thing that I want to offer to Krishna. The beauty of it and the, the abstract perfection of its form and so on is, is very wonderful and uh, actually is derived from Krishna's qualities of sound vibration. So the whole science of music is present in the uh, primordial sound vibration of Om. In fact, in any sound vibration, all the, the overtones and by derivation, all of the scales and everything is there. So Krishna is giving sound. And then we're taking that sound and we're offering it back to him with love. That's bhakti. That's a form of devotional service. So when we do that, when we take Krishna's energy and offer it back to him with love, in a way that we find uh, exactly pleasing, exactly satisfying to our own self, then Krishna appears. So the thing is when, when we are more or less forced to render devotional service only externally. It's very difficult for us to find the exact type of devotional service that we really want to do for all eternity. Because maybe it involves activities that aren't part of Vaidhi Bhakti. Huh? Like dancing in the forest in the middle of the night. <laughs> you know? Of course, dancing in kirtan is, is similar, but still, you know what I'm saying. So, uh, when we transcend, actually, the rules and regulations of devotional service, and we begin to love Krishna in our own way, spontaneously, that's Raga Nuga Bhakti. That's the real devotional service, the inner devotional service. Krishna is there within the heart. So we can approach him within the heart and we can love him in whatever way we want. When we take that initiative, Krishna responds. I, I keep telling you, uh, not you just particularly Laura, but all my students, I keep telling you that you have to do this. You have to approach Krishna and take the initiative to perform a particular kind of service that you like to do. Huh? Nobody else can tell you what that is. That's why we don't do Siddha Pranali in our line. In the, uh, some of the Vaishnava lineages, the guru will tell you, oh, you're a cowherd boy, or you're a gopi, or, or you're a butterfly in Vrindavan, or something like that. But uh, we don't do that because we understand that the soul has to himself understand what do I want to do for the rest of eternity for Krishna? When you understand that and you offer that to Krishna spontaneously, then Krishna gives everything. Uh, this is all described in the scriptures. I'm not making this up. Uh, I'm just putting it in uh, easy to understand language, I hope. Hmm.